Take your word for it, but yes, ready. All right, so welcome to another Jags podcast, episode 67. We've been arguing about what episode number we're on now for a while, but we're just going to commit to 67. All right, I'm buying into we're, 67. We're doing 67. It is 67. Okay. All right, um, we're here with uh, Mike and Joey and myself. That boys. We, we regret to tell you that James is taking some time off from the podcast. Um, he'll probably be back, but he needs some, he needs to do his own thing for yeah, a minute. I mean, he... And, he uh, Yes, what he's got to do. We so, all love James, yeah, and uh, love we'll him. see him when he gets back. But in the meantime, yeah, you got us, and Thank we you are for having me. By the way, yeah, yeah, we're excited. Um, you might remember Mike from our live episode at Engine Fifteen that we did. Uh, but we're excited because this is—is is this like the most dead time of, of football, like technically? Because like, is, can you think of a more dead time of, of football? No, no. I mean, preseason, arguably, like after the second game. To me, but at least you can talk at least about, something's like, going yeah, on. Yeah, at least you can yes. talk about like the players. But right playing. now is like the downtime. Yeah, for that's sure. what I would say too. Yeah, but the good news is, is that we have a lot to talk about. We do. So like that's we're kind of good position. Is that good or is that bad news? It's unfortunate. I was just about to say that actually. Yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, it's kind of like I, I wish we didn't have to talk about that. Yeah, but we do have stuff to talk about. So we do. better than nothing. We do. But everyone's doing all right tonight. Everyone's doing good. Yeah. Um, you can find us on Twitter, Another Jags Pod, Facebook, Instagram, Another Jags Podcast. Um, we're on YouTube, so we have this live stream on YouTube up, and then we also post the episode without us on YouTube, if you really don't like looking at us. Which, looking which, at this group, yeah. I could it, see that it's definitely could be, be understandable. Definitely seeing I mean, it. honestly, I thought today was the uh, men's national average. team soccer podcast. Yeah, Joey's got his soccer so, uh, jersey on. I'm completely yeah. off, like, off yeah, kilter okay. at this point, so we'll figure okay. it out. And Mike's got the PFF shirt on. We're going to be doing a lot of PFF, if you didn't know we're PFF fans. Joey's not. You and actually have a PFF shirt? Yeah, that dude works yeah, for PFF. Do you get like a free like year membership to like their... I did not do that. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. actually spent $200. We actually still pay, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's like an addition too. Yeah. All right, fair enough. All right, so let's get right to it. Um, obviously, the big news going on right now is Telvin Smith. Uh, Telvin Smith is said he's not going to play in 2019. Do you think that he will play ever again? I think he's playing this year. Honestly. I mean, I, I don't necessarily want that to happen because, I mean, the guy's obviously got some stuff going on. But I think when it comes down to it, when it comes down to his agent, the money, like, them eventually talking to him, I mean, I think he's going to have to come to realize, like, dude, you can't just take a year off from the NFL. I mean, I'm glad you think that you're good enough to do that. But, I mean, it, that's a special type of person that could take a year off, come back, and still have a position and still be good enough. It has to be something major that we don't know of. And I really can't think of anything that would be that severe, especially with his like freaking Instagram post, man. I mean, I think he's going to play. What do you think? Um, uh, I hope so. More than anything. I love Telvin. Uh, he's an integral part of our team. He's always been a leader, but the way he's been talking and it, something seems off. It doesn't seem like the Telvin that I've been following for a long time. So it doesn't seem like the Telvin that failed a drug test that he knew was coming in the I, combine. I think it's actually a diluted sample. Technically, but, I mean, regardless, but. <laughs> regardless of that, I mean, that, that's obviously the lead indicator. Like, hey, what issues have, has he had before now? Yeah. He failed yeah. a drug test. Okay, great. But he hasn't an issue at all. And you talk about like CTE, you talk about like maybe he's bipolar, like any like mental issues that he could have. Dude, the guy hasn't had any episodes. Like he's been like a, like a stand up guy on the team. Last year he didn't play great, but it wasn't like he was flying off the handle on stuff. I mean. Look like what he, happened to uh, Everson Griffin last season though. He freaks <sighs> out. I mean. Well, we have a couple questions about Telvin. And, right, um, bring this, him is a, this is a fan show. Like, uh, we're fans, um, and we want the fans to drive these episodes. Like, we want to talk about what y'all want to talk about. We want to read what y'all think. So if you're on YouTube, comment and tell us what you think about what we're saying. And we will, because we, this is about y'all. So it's special on YouTube, because those have dropped off, and those are my favorite, because I actually answer those. Well, our YouTube lives have picked up. Sure. Because ever since we started moving to live, um, our lives have picked up. So. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, the, the recordings. Post them to both. There you go. 
All right, Joey's gonna finish, guys. If I am. I'm getting finished. I'm getting kind of kind of butt hurt, man. I mean, come on. So we got two good questions about Telvin. So I'm gonna read both of them real quick. Okay, the first one's from Pete, and he's at Coach L tweets, and he says Miles Jack was quoted saying he still expects to be the Mike linebacker this season. He says, so who do y'all believe will realistically take Telvin's spot at will linebacker? And the other question is from Brent Papineau, and he's at Brent Papineau, and he says since Telvin seems to be gone, who do you think? right now would be our starting linebackers both running and passing downs and does this automatically make josh allen a three down player i'll take the simple answer here because you guys are going to go way more in depth on that <laughs> obviously i mean if telvin does not come back i mean i i cannot see miles not getting pushed out right and everything revolving around the fact that ryan is healthy and can play middle i mean that that's like the logical hey this is what's going to happen but you guys are way more in depth on that so take it away Okay, I will. All right, so I think Jake Ryan will play that Sam linebacker, which is like what we kind of wanted Leon Jacobs to play last year. Kind of a, uh, what was his name from the 49ers that we signed? Uh, Dan Scuda? I feel like he's in the same kind of mold. Yeah, Dan Scuda. And basically what these, the what these guys do... Please in, don't compare anybody to Scuda ever yeah, again. Because that was like... Scuda was yeah, supposed yeah. to be. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be. There we go. Yeah. Good point. But basically what this guy does, this Sam backer in our 4-3 base defense, is that he lines up on the strong side of the field. So if that's a tight end... Uh, if that's you know a fullback and basically he just keeps his outside shoulder free and tries to keep the play inside of him and then allows these fast linebackers to see the gaps or where the ball's going shoot the gaps and make a tackle so he basically is like the wall he like has to take on the blockers so i think jake ryan could do that and i think that's why you see miles jack stay at that mike linebacker position because he can kind of get to anywhere from there. And he's already used to calling the defense, being the signal caller, audibles, recognizing formations. And I think he's going to be really good at that. And I think he'll be good there. And I think in nickel formation, when they bring DJ Hayden on, they'll just take Jake Ryan off. But the biggest question that concerns me is, like, where's the depth there? Quincy. So Quincy, referring to Quincy Wilson. Quincy, I mean, but I mean. Is it Quincy Williams. Quincy Williams. Quincy yeah. Wilson is the DB from yeah. Florida. I'd Confuse them all the time. Quincy Williams played like a more of a box safety at Murray State, though. Are you surprised to see Blair or uh, Blair Brown cut already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blair that Brown was kind of shocking. He's trash. Nice. No, I mean, trash. as far as like the depth goes, depth though. Yeah, but look at the guy. Okay, so yeah, yeah he was trash. Well, Nick but... DeLuca actually played pretty well last year. Yeah. You want to hear an interesting stat about Nick DeLuca? This is gonna blow your mind. What? Okay, are you ready for this? As if he's got like a cool name. <laughs> yeah, we just have a cool all name. Right. Okay, so. He played 76 snaps last year. That's including special teams. So, you know, probably... Probably all special teams. Yeah. Well, no. So, his PFF rating in the run and the pass was a 50, which is pretty, pretty not good. Very it's fair to good. say not good. However, on his 11 pass rush snaps where he rushed the passer... He had a 92.5 pass rusher rating. Yeah, in the fourth quarter when we're down by like 14. <laughs> Dude, that yeah, is, not like, not a bad like, chance. What like why like why wouldn't you put it, why wouldn't you give him a couple more snaps there? If you're a coach and you're seeing that like oh dang he's literally getting to the quarterback every time he rushes the passer. Like, I mean I understand who Nick DeLuca is. I'm not trying to hype up Nick DeLuca, but let's just like can we just take a second just like a 92.5? You can the best you can do is like a hundred. You can draw those up though pressure wise. You can, but are you going to do that with Nick DeLuca? No. I'm saying, 11 I mean, times? I mean, that's fine. I don't know. I mean, I know. I know. Okay, so we also got Rameek Wilson. He's 6'2", 238. He's in like his fifth or sixth year. He went to Georgia. Remember him at Georgia? Like five or six years ago? He was pretty good. But he had a 71 PFF grade in pass coverage, but then a 53 on run. So that's... I would rather have him There's than a lot Blair of depth, Brown. just not good. Najee good? Yeah. Eight year, pro. Time, but... <laughs> Eight year pro, six foot, 244. He's actually second on the depth chart but behind well, he has more Telvin. He, he's eight year pro. He's yeah. got a lot of experience. So you know he's going to at least know what he's doing out there. Then we get into the rookies. Joe Giles Harris from Duke. I like this guy. Um, he, run, he runs well. He fits gaps well. He scrapes well. He doesn't get caught in traffic. And he tackles well. That's really all you can ask for in a, in a strong side backer. We kind of kind of. Oh, excuse me. Got, got a little uh, got dry there. Up about yeah. Joe Giles. No, Harris. I was going to say, no, not that. I mean, you kind of glanced over like Quincy Williams. I mean, yeah, his tape was awesome, but yeah. his tape was like 70% of 
like plays that would not work in the NFL because he can get flagged on every one of them. He's going to like break his spine or break somebody else's back and get a penalty on every tackle he makes. Yeah. So, I mean, are you comfortable with him being an option? Like, are they going to be able to like fix like, yeah, he's like a, he's almost like a free safety, like go do what you want to do and like spear people. I mean, like better than being timid. I would definitely better than that. Though. I agree. I agree a hundred percent, but I don't think his play style is going to work. I don't, oh, I don't every see down him, guy. I don't see him playing a lot of snaps. It's okay. maybe like a hundred. Yeah, he's going to be a project, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Best case scenario, he's Robert Alford from the Falcons, who who legit like spears everybody. If you remember, he's the guy that hurt Marquise Lee. And I have no problem with a like good tackle and somebody ends up getting hurt. I mean, I don't want anybody to get hurt ever. No, I mean he was helmeted knee. I mean, it's yeah. it's, it's legal, but yeah, Robert Alford. Are you not going to talk on the mic? You're just gonna... it, was, it wasn't Robert Alford. It was, uh, it's someone's it first was, time was, on the podcast. It was uh, Ka- Kaze. What was his name? There's no Stan. Uh, oh, 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 uh, Kazi. Was it yeah, Kazi? He said it a few times. He okay, that. so that, yeah, that's what I'm yeah. thinking of. Yeah. Who so I think kind of like back to the question though, like at this point, everything being like what it is, what we know, do you guys want Telvin Smith playing this year? Absolutely, I'll take him. You do? Yeah, He's not. Sure. Okay, regardless, I'm saying right now, I think he's done. I think if he's coming back this year, outside of everything we know, do you want him coming back? Absolutely. Do I want him coming back? Yes. I don't. Honestly, really? after last year, the production okay. he had last year, the angles he was taking, like something was creeping in at that point. Yeah. Whatever it is was creeping in Defense at that point. As a whole, though, was was down. Only yeah, that we're still fifth in. The, we're still fifth in the league, and he was a large part of it being not what it was. There was a and, Malik was down last year. Yeah, Miles I mean, Jack didn't play as well as the year before. I agree, and I think he should be outside, not middle, and that's why he wasn't playing as well. But that being said, he's always been an undersized linebacker, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he's always outplayed his size. You look at those videos, dude, the guy's lost weight, a lot of weight. Yeah. Like, he's smaller than he's ever been. And that guy can't stand to lose weight. Like, you lose 10, 15 but pounds as him. It wasn't the... It wasn't... The tackling that concerned me. It was, it was the angles. Pass coverage has been yeah, bad. He, the, he got his eyes caught in the backfield, got caught up in play actions, took terrible angles yeah, he's to always ball relied carriers. On speed, okay, well, regardless of that, all that, right. this year he looks like he's at least 10 or 15 pounds underweight as it is, and he's already a guy playing underweight. Okay, that so, concerns me. So this year, I mean, he had the best year of his career in 2017. He was 80, fantastic. He had 82 PFF rating. Yeah. This year, 65.2, which is... The worst since Huge his rookie job year. Yeah. Worst yeah. his rookie year. Like you saw Telvin like kind of climbing. Like he was at 64, 66, 73, 81. And that's when he got that big contract. So it's like, okay, this dude's getting better every year. But last year, I mean, he just plummeted. I'm just going off like visuals. Like there's an issue. Last year something was going on we weren't aware of. There's obviously an issue now. The stuff he's put out, he looks small, like smaller than small. Yeah. I honestly don't want him to come back this year. I mean, I think that would be a negative for the team. I think we can work it out outside of that. So, I mean, that's my take on it. It's good I to mean, have the money. It's like $8 million. Sure. To get. Yeah. I mean, even outside of that, I mean, money is money. I agree. The cap room is fantastic. But just from a player personnel standpoint, something's wrong with him that needs to be fixed. And if he comes back, it's going to be forced. And I'm not a fan of it. But if he... I, d- does he ever come back? I mean, can you ever think of an example when a player takes a year off and comes back? Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, people get in, people get injured. And Anthony come... Davis is trying it right now for whoever he was. I mean, yeah, like Ricky played. Yeah, like Ricky Williams. He's probably yeah, like he's the... been off like three years. He's trying to come back. Oh, yeah, talk... he took off Anthony Davis, the right tackle for the... the center for the Pelicans. No, yeah, not... he didn't take a year off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he did. He but... probably should have shaved <laughs> his like eyebrows, but outside of that, Anthony Davis, he was a uh, right tackle, first round pick from the. Well, he's trying to. He's not going to do it. Well, this question. I mean, other guys like Josh Gordon. I could like, see. I could see the itch. I'm sorry. Go ahead. But Josh, Josh, Gordon, like, Josh Gordon like has been off and on and like tried to come back. Right. And you know, Ricky Williams, I guess, is probably the best I can think of example of somebody who like quit football altogether for whatever reason and came back. And yeah, he performed. Marshawn okay. Lynch. Marshawn Lynch. Marshall Lynch yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's a great example actually, yeah. and he came back and did well. But dude, I mean, Telvin's already like overperforming at a position that he's undersized for. Yeah. Take your off, man. Hey, dude. I think he'll be back by preseason. 
You think so? That, that burn. That I still think he will be. I agree, but I just don't necessarily think I Bro, want him to be. Dude, something's up with him, man. And 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 I and I like how everyone's like supporting him. Maybe he's just burned out, man. I mean, he loves football. Yeah, maybe playing he is. for Doug Marone and yeah, no, Hoffman. you're right. I mean, we've talked about that many times on the podcast. Yeah. Like Doug Marone is like driving these guys into the ground, yeah. man. These guys aren't showing up to volunteer there was camps. There's nothing like it was though, like ten years ago, man. Those yeah, guys be, were able era, to do man. it. Man, it's a different time. So look the, at, is everybody softer? Like the, look at, no, they just like they're not. It's different. You can't say soft is like not going to training camp like 12, two times a day. Yeah. And I mean, you're still I, practicing with pads on which every practice. Yeah. yeah mm. it's, it's like, I mean, I don't know. Look at the teams like the Rams. I mean, these teams are like freaking going to the beach, you know? And we got, we're out here like, it's going to make us better. Really? Because we're 5 and 11. So how much better is it making <laughs> us? But we have a question about the Telvin cap space. And this is from Darren Frazier, and he's at TD Frazier. He says, with Telvin likely out, this frees up cap space for the Jags. About $9 million. Yeah. With with what's available in free agency, what position would you like to see upgraded? That's a like seriously hard question because obviously I'd like to see wide receiver come in. We need some running back depth. Depth. I mean, but there's nothing in free agency that really like excites me at those positions. So I mean, safety maybe. Safety. I think Eric safety Barry's would be there. Eric Berry. Dude, but, Eric Berry's still a stud, man. I mean, what's for the deal a year? With him though, like I mean, I and I know he's like. He's old and injured. He's old and injured. Probably wants a lot of money. But he won't get it. I but mean, he's not getting he's signed for it. Signed. Like, we could wait and pick him up and, I mean, for whatever. Point, he's probably, he's still a little bit better than Ronnie Harrison, but I mean. Yeah, Harrison's going to be the man. Is he I, better I than Jerry Wilson? Nice. Yeah. They don't, I mean, free safety. I can imagine Eric Berry playing free safety. Yeah. Ronnie Harrison could play free safety. Yeah, maybe. He's definitely better than Jared. I was hoping we'd take a look at uh, Jamie Collins, but uh, unfortunately he got signed today. Oh, did he? By who? I missed that. Patriots. No, of yeah. course. Really? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Imagine that, right? Bringing yeah, him back. Yeah. yeah. Well, what are you going to do? So outside of safety, I mean, I guess what else can we fill? I mean, free agency is like, this is like probably the weakest free agency yeah. like I ever, mean, we right? we got the best free agent and we paid him $88 million. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really outside of that, though, I mean, they're, this free agency has been bad. Yeah. I mean, they're showing like, uh, they were talking about on uh, Pro Football Talk today, like Jaguars, like key additions. Yeah. Okay. So oh, they said, number one. It was obviously Nick Foles. Guess who number two was? <laughs> wow. Uh, Brian? No, worse. Worse. Jeff Swaim, the tight yes. end. Really? <laughs> he was the only other key the addition. Key addition. Which he might, he like, might even make the like, team. I, I know. Like, I, <laughs> I get that Like we spent a lot of money on, uh, on uh, Foles. But like really, like our next best edition was oh, wow. Jeff Swain. But again, it's because there really wasn't much to work with. That's true. I mean, There's honestly. not a lot out there. I so, mean. yeah. So yeah, I mean, I guess safety. I'm with you there. Safety, Eric Berry. Uh, we read off some names last week of some safeties, and like they, I mean, none of them do anything. For Ray you Boston at all. is kind of oh, straight. God, which again, I mean, here is this? Which again, why do you, we? Have, <laughs> it goes back to the fact why do you yeah. get why do we get rid of Gibson? Yeah. Because basically, they had to clear room for they didn't know for Foles. They really didn't. As it turns out, they didn't because we have more than enough cap room at this point. I mean, that that was really yeah. probably the worst well, call in free agency. They didn't know Telvin was going to be gone, and even if to, they didn't, they still could have signed everybody they signed. To account for like injuries, because if there's a couple injuries in preseason, you gotta. I mean, like, what if a linebacker gets hurt? What if Miles Jack gets hurt? Yeah. Then what? Don't even speak that, please. I, yeah, I, please, I, please don't. No, not, please don't okay, put that into the internet. What if D.D. Westbrook gets hurt? What if Nick Foles gets hurt? Like, if any <sighs> of these people were shallow with depth get hurt. Then you have to have a little bit of like emergency cash to go in and get someone that can like keep your head above water. Well, we've that's got the it. Only thing. We've got it. We've got it, and that's good. Yeah. And we might need it. I hope we don't. All right, this next question is from UCF Jaguar, and he's at UCF underscore Jaguar. And we love UCF Jaguar. Yeah, it's it great. It's like two weeks in a row. I great appreciate work. it, bro. Like if I am not watching this YouTube channel, I'm watching UCF Jaguar. Which is hilarious because yeah. he's in Orlando, which is even better, right? Yeah. I mean Exactly. Number one Orlando Jaguar hardcore podcast. If you're in yeah. their city. If you do us a favor, UCF Jaguar, and if you see Mike Bianchi, just like stab his tires with a knife. Nah, maybe just like a be awesome. back of the neck punch. Yeah. That'd be cool, yeah, too. Maybe a slap, like yeah. just in the face. Fair like... enough. But anyways, he asks, should Josh Allen stick to D-end, or should he get reps at linebacker as well? I'm going to go with stick at D-end, because this is all he's ever done. I mean, like, against any kind of, like, serious defense. Or offense, sorry. Yeah. I mean, really, that's... That, that's his wheelhouse. I mean, obviously the guy is a freak, like physically. I mean, uh, again, I'll, I'll give Mike props here because I had a reactionary, complete comments to him during the draft. One of them would go offense. Afterwards, I mean, you look at him, 
everything everybody's saying about him, like the guy is, you just look at the guy and he's like, he's an absolute, um, he's like LeBron uh, as a football player. He is a freak of nature, the right size, the like just V ripped fast. Like the guy could probably do anything you ask him to do. You probably play tight end if you want him to. So it's wide open, but he knows one position. He knows, he's got a, a couple moves, like all speed moves. I think he's probably got a, a year of learning before he could do something like that, but that's just my take. I, I definitely agree with that. Let him learn the NFL. Let him get used to it. Pa- do what he does best, rush the passer, and then next year. He draws a lot of comparisons yeah. to Anthony Barr, yeah. linebacker from Von Miller, Minnesota. Anthony Barr, and Anthony Barr, like honestly, when, when he was at UCLA, did exactly what Allen does. That's the easiest thing to do. I mean, yeah. you can outrun everybody. Why right. not? Exactly. Right? Exactly. But then when he moves to the NFL, he's able to move into that linebacker role, and he's been a four-time pro bowler. He plays a lot of linebacker, though. He does not rush the passer a lot. He's, he's primarily a linebacker. That's my point. And he, they look a lot alike. And in college, Anthony Bard basically did what Josh Allen did, beat to the edge of speed, and then he got to the NFL and was able to adapt his game. If that happens, that may work out for us with Ngakwe being the same position because, I mean, who... We were talking about it earlier. Like, who was the the big DN before Calais Campbell? Like, Ngakwe is the weak side end, so he never has to beat a tight end. He never has to take on a double team. He basically just beats the tackle to the edge. Who who would before Campbell? Who did we have? Do you remember? Odrick, like and, uh, Jared, Jared Odrick, Odrick and Red Bryant. Yeah, right, and, and yeah, and so these big guys, like that's not what Josh Allen is. No, we've well, so, gone away from that somewhat. I know, Calais, but still, that's like your, Calais is just good enough that he can play inside. You're right. Yeah, I mean, Calais, Calais can just do it because he's. But I'm just the so, man. Uh, Anthony Barr last year. Let's see how many pass rushes he had. He rushed the passer. Oh wow! See if I can find it on PFF. Man, you should have had this before you brought it up. Sorry, right, guys. Ouch! Hashtag twenty-two pod- podcast pressures. rookie. Twenty-three Hashtag pressures. Hashtag getting twenty-three pressures last year. Three sacks. One hurry. Or uh, one 23, hit. Twenty-three pressures is not bad. Not bad. How many times did he rush the passer? Let's see here. He, he probably only did it on like zone blitz schemes and or like uh, exotic blitz schemes where the outside backer was blitzing. I can't imagine it was like a every third down type thing where you'd almost want Josh Allen to be blitzing every third. I mean, down. honestly, do we need somebody who's solely a pass rusher at this point? I don't think so. I think third we need down, somebody. Absolutely. Well, third down, okay, but we need somebody that can okay, yes, rush the passer, but also drop back in coverage and cover the seam, man. I mean, because, that's what we need more now when that Tillman's gone. Yes, that's the issue. Well, because Tillman couldn't do that last year. Josh Allen's not in that mold, though. I don't see him playing that now. Yeah, I don't either. That's the problem. You don't think he's fast enough? He's fast enough? He's fast enough. Just I'm no. not saying next year. I'm saying just in general. Yeah. No? I mean, can you, yeah. He's more of, I think he's more in the Sam. All right. Sam? Yeah. Sam, kind of like. No. I don't think so. I think, I mean, why not? On base formations? Like I mean, Von maybe. I mean, maybe. Maybe. He's like the Khalil Mack, Vaughn Miller role that they play that on base they, That's a 3-4 Sam. That's different. Than a four three Sam, it's all it's same thing nowadays. It's different, yeah. Tomato tomato. Yeah, that's true. Agree disagree. But anyways, I mean, it's it's. I think he should play D end, and I think he should get some base four three linebacker reps. I mean, he's gonna have to. I think either way, him falling to us is like more of a blessing now than it ever was. Yeah. Knowing what's happening with Telvin, whether it's this year or going forward. I mean, just the not knowing what Telvin's going to do or what he's going to be if he does decide to play or if he's going to come back next year, getting Allen when we did is even like more important than ever. So we got very lucky and very blessed with that. That's true. Does he, does he, doesn't, he doesn't, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to draw, he's nothing like D4, does he? Okay. I think, yeah, Yannick's more like D4. D, yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay. All right, so let's move to this next question. And this one is from, we're going to go random here. <laughs> I like this question. <laughs> this is from Jason, and he's at Rad HCP. It was 103 pass rushes, by the way. Sorry. That's pretty good. That's yeah. a lot more than I thought, actually. Wow. What? It's like 10 per game, almost. Yeah. 8 per game, 9 per game. That's a lot. For an outside linebacker? Yeah, Absolutely. three sacks. It's pretty crappy. <laughs> how, many, how many hurries did he have? He had uh, 20. Uh, hurries, he had 19. He had 19 hurries on 100 and... How many? Yeah, 103. It's not bad, then. Mix those two together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, this question's from Jason. He's at Rat HCP, and he says, Lost beneath all the Telvin news, Cody Kessler got cut. Are you guys comfortable with one of the quarterbacks on the roster being the backup? Minshew, Lee, McGo, 
And who do you think wins the job? Can I take this, please? <laughs> please do. Please, can I take Tell this me who has a quick release. Y- tell, tell me. Tell me. Okay, I am all in on Gardner Minshew. I'm all in on this guy, as man. The, is as it the just immediate backup? Though? As the immediate backup. Is it just because of the George? Okay, if think about this. It's because of the George, isn't this. it? Okay, if if I brought you in and I was like, okay, Nick Saban wanted this guy to be the backup quarterback to Jalen Hurts. Backup quarterback. And to then Jalen Hurts. and then I came to you and I said, Mike Leach want, called the same guy and said, I want you to lead my air raid offense and be the leading pass yardage guy in the league. Would you want that guy on your team? I'm going to say that I'm fine with him being the backup because I'm a big fan of a guy who puts up legitimate numbers in college being a pro. So based on that That's true. and the fact that he's got good man thighs, oh, man. I'm good with he it. He looks good in those jean shorts. I mean, he does. He can pull it off. Got to cut Kessler immediately. Dude, Kessler was garbage. We he played sh- in the NFL, though. He's garbage. We saved good money with him, though, cutting him. We like saved the fact that Philly, dollars. What about the fact that Philly picked him up, though? Yeah. That's, that's pretty funny, right? I mean... Swap for we Malik Jackson and Cody Kessler for yeah. Nick Foles. I think we kind of lost that one, but Heather maybe, Newkirk, Heather Newkirk on YouTube wants to know is is that one of Miles Jack's homemade candles on the table? It better be after okay. last episode. It's not. It's actually called Five O'clock Shadow. Wow, and it Jason, is the, a most amazing candle. His mother. It's it's that. not actually Heather because we don't have the Miles Jack wasn't down candle, and I apologize for our complete lack of just being legitimate, and that's on Jason. It is on me. But next time I will try to get the one. The candle does smell this good. This smells amazing. Is it a soy candle at least, or am I picking up carcinogens here? <laughs> Bro, you don't I even don't know. know. You don't dude. even know. Okay, this it's thing, a cancer candle. This sure. thing, <laughs> this smells like, uh, like, it does smell like good. men's cologne. I have to say, it so does like, smell good. I mean, I live by myself, you know. He is so. wearing a white V-neck t-shirt. <laughs> I live by podcast. myself. I gotta have a candle that smells like cologne, bro. It I'm does, not trying it, to have like some like fruity smelling junk in here. Either I have to back up the fact it does smell good, but <laughs> we've got to get a Miles Jack yeah, candle. You're right. That's a good point. Sorry, Heather. Point. We 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 failed there. All right. So back to uh, Gardner Minshew. This dude put up numbers. I'm with Joey here. Like, let's get a guy who's. I mean, I know quarterbacks put up numbers in college all the time. They don't translate. I I get that. I'm it not was dumb. the one that came out of Washington State last year. It was a. Uh, they had one recently. Yeah. Went to uh, Tennessee Titans. Luke Falk. Yeah, Luke Falk. Yeah, I mean, and he was a guy that everyone wanted the Jags to get. Yeah. I mean, he hasn't almost. been good, but he, none of the quarterbacks at Tennessee have been good in a but while. But this is also another locker room guy. Like, he's not yes, going to have exactly. a problem being the second like, and He's fiddle. a beach bar guy. Like, he's going to be... <laughs> That's what we need. We're going to catch my exactly. dog at Shim Sham. And instead of, like, You're taking drinks... Shot at a, no, he'll be buying a drinks. He'll be buying drinks for people and not drinking himself, like... You know, BB. <laughs> but problem. Not the sad, depressed alcohol you know. like Blake Bortles was. <laughs> but Minshew is the guy that, like, he'll have no problem coming in, running practice squad, running second team, being that guy, and still being a leader amongst, like, all the guys that aren't starting. Like, that's kind of what you want. You, I mean, I agree with Jason. Like, I, I think I think we're good with those two, but we're, we're, we got to have somebody else besides, what, Lee's the third, third guy? It's Lee and McGo. Alex McGo. I mean, I've never heard of McGo. And, like and, uh, and Lee is never, like... Disgusting. Yeah, he's awful. Yeah. Can you, how can we? How did we resign Tanner Lee? Yeah, how I don't know. That guy's like my hero. Did he get cut? I thought he was just on his rookie contract. I think was he's he, still on the actual. He roster. didn't make the fifty-three last year. No, so but he's still a practice, he practice squad, like squad up and down. Guy. But he's still around. That's weird that they like him, man. I wonder what it is about him they like them. Is it apparently quick it's his quick release? <laughs> he does have a quick release. If you've ever watched him, the dude throws the ball quick. He does, yeah. but not accurately or anywhere. Or powerful, yeah. or knows the plays. Or... I, I am excited to see uh, Flip and Foles work with uh, Gardner, though. I think they can do some good stuff. So I have a question for you guys, but we have to take a break, because now that we're like with Big Cat Country, we have to put ads into our podcast every like 20 to 30 minutes. Let's rephrase so, that. We have to put very important ads that you guys should listen absolutely. to. Absolutely, and whatever the ad is, you should like... Jason backs it. You should say that another Jack's <laughs> podcast convinced you to... To do whatever ad that is. Uh, the only they reason I the only reason well. I, I <laughs> pur- <laughs> purchase this product or use this service yeah. is because of AJP. Yeah, and I mean they're all great. You know, I can vouch for all literally <laughs> whatever the like service that. or product is. But we gotta take a quick break. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube live, we're probably gonna like use the bathroom and like refill our water. So apparently the camera's not gonna turn off. Oh no. Okay. We wouldn't rob the that's, fans. That's of that. good that's good yeah. to know. But we have to take a break for like the audio podcast because there's gonna be a commercial here. Fair enough. So just letting you right now, there's a commercial here. You know what to do. We'll be Sounds right back. Good. Another Jack's podcast. Hey JP. All 
so we are back and live another Jags podcast episode 67 um we could probably call this what the Telvin Smith episode right that seemed fair yeah I mean that's really I mean it's really the only big story on and and uh, it's all good with us but um you can make sure you can follow us on Instagram Facebook another Jags podcast uh Twitter another Jags pod YouTube we have these episodes live you can watch them if you like looking at us if you don't we also have it just the audio on there so either way we're there for you. We actually have a website, anotherjagspodcast.com, which rumors is that we're just going to be like articles on there one day. Yeah. Uh, also rumors it's been the worst website affiliated <laughs> no, to something no, no, successful I've, I've ever. I've cleaned it up. I've cleaned it up. Oh, have you? Yeah. I've Sorry, I stopped going bit. to it because it hurt my eyes. It, it was bad for a while. but It was bad. Like everything that we've ever done on this podcast, we don't take it too seriously. No, that's and true. So until people complain enough, we're just like, all right. Very true. But anyway, so I have, I have a question for you guys. I said on this podcast, like, January, I was like, yo, Kyle Rudolph, he played with DeFilippo. This is a Minnesota guy, right? Yeah, Minnesota okay. tight end. He played with DeFilippo. He is in the last year of his deal. He's owed, like, maybe six or seven million this year. He's also, like, older than I am, right? <laughs> he's, like, what, 43? No, he's not that old. He's, like, 32. Really? Yeah, not that old. Are you sure? 29. Yeah. He, That's he, it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But um, he's, I mean... The problem, I mean, the most receiving yards he's ever had in a season is like 800. Yeah, that's 200 yards more than the Jaguars leader. And yeah, that's true. Yards. Which, I mean, I think the guy that we drafted is going to catch some balls. I mean, I think we need he somebody that's going to come in. But he, but he yeah. can't block. He, he can't block either? So, so no. we want to take Rudolph? No, or, no, I'm saying oh, I'm Wilson sorry. can't block. I'm asking, can Rudolph block? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, but I did yeah. see a stat that no one, uh, no tight ends blew more blocks than he did last year. Mm. So, I'm not sure that's the maroon. Maybe that's why Filippo got fired. Was because of Rudolph. Point. Have they seen Olsen try to block, though? Because he may be the number one. He's never had to block a day in his life. Olsen? Yeah. Oliver? Mm. Oliver. Are you going to bring Oliver in and tell the defense it's passing down and then bring Swaim in and tell the defense it's uh, running down? What, what about, about O'Shaughnessy? Just... I mean, a big slot, I think Oliver does well. But what about a tight end, traditional blocking tight end? Because Swaim is not a receiving threat at all. It is, I don't know if that's true. He's not. I mean, he's absolutely not. I, I did that cut up. He had some nice. I mean, he had some, some nice like catches. tight he end catches screens. The ball. He catches he's the ball. He's had some like. I, mean, I think he dropped like two passes last year out of like 50 targets. But do you think O'Shaughnessy gets those snaps though? Yes. They'll, they'll split it. I think O'Shaughnessy plays enough. O'Shaughnessy's solid, man. But you're he earned at his a role on the team. Who traditionally had a premier tight end working with him. And you're all, and then not only are you going to like take away a premier tight end, you're going to give him like a maybe bottom below average. Yeah, well, a terrible. Josh Oliver wise though, in slot he was second among all draft eligible tight ends in slot receptions, and he was number one in slot yards. Dude, Again, you saw Oliver's three hundred and fifty seven. We, we sat here and watched Oliver. Yeah, the dude catches everything thrown to him. His hands are amazing. Yeah, yeah. True. I mean, he hasn't had much time at the position, but that guy is a work in progress. That has the potential to be like talk about upside potential. I mean, everybody talks about that. I mean, that guy has the potential to be like a legit, like top 10 receiving tight end in the league easily. And he could be he learned to block. He's a big dude, man. Ball. He's never been taught I just to block. I don't know what, how he'll translate to the NFL. I mean, you got to remember he was playing in like the dude. He's bigger well, than everybody's going to be guarding him. That's a tight end position. So many randoms have become Jason Kelsey. Where did yes. he come from? Like, Jason Kelsey. Dude, he's bigger. He's Madden. bigger and Jason has better Kelsey? hands than everybody guarding or him. Jason Kelsey. Or I'm Tyler Kelsey. The uh, what is it? <laughs> Travis, Travis Kelsey. Kelsey? Travis Kelsey. 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 Hey, Jason Witten. No, Witten. there is a Jason. Kelsey. No, from this it's point on, is yeah, T is T Kels. I like yeah. that T Kels. We yeah, don't need we don't need a first name. But point being is like, dude, this guy catches everything within his wheelhouse, and his wheelhouse is like eight feet because his wingspan is huge. His hands are like the best I've ever seen. For a tight end, he's got really strong hands. He's the got dude, strong the dude hands. Catches everything exactly. Yeah. All he needs is some coaching, man. I mean, yeah. they could easily teach him better routes and teach him to block. I think he's going to be way better than everybody thought. I, I, he's, I don't think he's a blocker, though. I think he like, can be taught to block. He, he's think, a big dude, he, man. He's he, not small. You know I think he is? I think he's Ernest Wilford. That's what All I think right. he is. One Fair thing enough. that people have not talked about is that Filippo co- or coached at San Jose State. So really? Do, yeah, he has some connections there. Uh, 2010, he was the quarterback's coach. In 2011, he was the... OC hmm. and QB coach. Interesting. Yeah. You know who else has a tie? It's all starting to come together. Yeah. You know who else has a tie to a uh, player? Is um, a linebacker 
that we signed undrafted free agent out of Boston College, Connor Strachan. Um, he played at Boston College, and you remember who Boston College's coach is? Yeah, of course. Was, uh, Can't talk in the microphone there. Tom Coughlin? Yeah. You know, who, you know who taught this? You know who coached this year? This year was, uh, I don't even know. Oh, it's uh, Ben McAdoo. Boston College is still playing football? Ben McAdoo was their coach. Boom. Ben McAdoo is the OC yeah, for they had, Tom Coughlin. They had like jerseys and everything. He was huh? the coach for Tom Coughlin. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. So Ben McAdoo, I'm sure, called and was like, yo, this dog can play. How many, you know he made a call to him. For the, uh, what's his name from Florida that coaches there now? Boston College? He's not there anymore. Adazio. How, how many he's points did... No, it was McAdoo. How many points did Boston College beat Florida State by? A lot. I didn't, enough to that I didn't see the game. So we should be like... God Good knows. about that then, all right? Florida, no Florida State lost in Boston College. I believe so. I think they lost to pretty much everybody. Can you imagine, like, <laughs> imagine this. I'm imagine Kentucky. imagine lining up against a team that's wearing the exact same uniforms as yours, but flipped. Ooh. And with and, and Adidas. <laughs> and there's, the Under Armour. Okay. And there's, a, there's actual, like, like college, like. <laughs> no names on the back. You have to actually well, have, like, grades to get in. God. Yeah, I did not watch I digress. I think we are digressing. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, no. Um, uh, I, what we're talking about, uh, Oliver. Yeah, I think you're right, Joe. I think he could step in and be... Uh, I think of all the people we drafted, like he could be the biggest upside out of anybody. Him or I, the Temple guy. I know a lot of people are excited about him. Which was... The running back Armstead. Uh, Requ- oh, oh, yeah. Armstead. I agree. I, I forgot yeah, about well, that guy. I mean, the good thing about running backs is that like you never know. Yeah. You never you're know. Legit, I mean, hey, you could draft them in the top five. I feel like that's the same and they could be from LSU, end. and they could be the number one player in the And that guy's, com- that guy's coming with an attitude. Like, yeah. all his, like, yeah. all his like, clips are like, hard. dude, I run angry. He's yeah. like, I'm ready to be here. He's like, I'm, I mean, you got a guy coming from a school like that that has that kind of chip on his shoulder? You know I'm all about that. I mean, it's almost better than a backstory. All right, so this next question on Twitter is from... I'm trying to stall because I do not have it up. Okay, this next question is from Patrick Jackson, our boy P-Jack. PJ and uh, I wonder how my dog's doing with Manchester City winning another Premier League title over there. I'm sure he's very upset about that because all it is buy all the players like always. And sorry, P Jack. I mean, I, 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 he he's got to root for the underdog. I can't remember which team he says. Newcastle, maybe. Like a, I think it, it was Newcastle. Newcastle. I think it was I Newcastle. It was someone like Nottingham Forest. Or... Yeah, it's a good team. Don't disrespect them. That's my no. Uh, but I think it was like a, in FIFA. <laughs> I think it was like a like legendary like. History wise okay. team that hasn't been good in like a lot of years. It might have been Newcastle. Patrick, sorry if I'm wrong, but you can correct me, obviously. Arsenal? Glad you recovered from your bees but, No, it wasn't bees. It was uh <laughs> what, what turns into butterflies? Uh caterpillars. <laughs> caterpillar. It was poisonous caterpillars. But go ahead with the question. Right, this is my this is my favorite guy. Sorry, Patrick, go for it. He is. All right, he says he's so <laughs> caterpillars, huh? It's a long story. That's awful. <laughs> He says, suffering from indigestion last night after too much fish and chips got me thinking. What Jaguar performance has caused you the most belly ache over the years? I'm not going to go like deep back. There's a million. I mean, there's a ton. I'm going to go with the KC performance this year because that was like the beginning of the end. I mean, it was pretty bad too. Yeah. The house was pretty rough. Yeah. I mean, it, but I mean, KC kind of like set the tone for the rest of the season. I'm going to keep you it like Dallas. Yeah. yeah. You little troll. Does or the, or does Philly the even. the quarter of the AFC Championship game count at all? Because that still hurts me. Yeah. Okay, but that, could you really be mad you were in the AFC Championship game? No, I mean, kind of. We kind of blew that. I one. think, yeah, we blew it. That's what we that's did, what we but... Miles Jack not being down. There's but no I was still, like, not... I didn't, like, throw up after that game. All right, let me just tell you a little about this Dallas game that the Jags played yeah, last Yeah, Dallas is okay. bad. I forgot about right, that. Easily tore us right. apart. Dude, Cole Beasley. I didn't want to hear it. All right. Cole Beasley. Uh, okay, I'm going to step take a step back. <laughs> Dallas was definitely the worst game because that guy didn't do anything beforehand. Oh He's never gosh. done anything after, and he looked like a freaking purple wide receiver. Listen to these receiver. stats, all right? No, it's Tyler Patton okay. on him. These, the game. these are just yeah. rushing stats. Ezekiel Elliott, 24 carries, 106 yards. Dak Prescott, 11 carries, 82 yards. Receiving yards. Cole Beasley, 9 receptions, 101 yards, and 2 Never will touchdowns. do it again. That boy got himself a contract with, was it the Titans? Or no, it was Humphreys. Cole Beasley's went to. He went to Buffalo. Buffalo. He got himself a contract in Buffalo solely off of his game against Jaguars. I am convinced that's what happened. It was embarrassing, but it was because of the KC game before that, they realized where they were at. Yeah. We got, that was pretty bad. We were actually in it at one point in KC. Yeah, like first quarter. Yeah. Second no, quarter, maybe. It was close. It yeah. was, I think we got the ball in a turnover, and then Bortles fumbled late in the second. And then from there, it was. Two straight t- touchdowns. Yeah, it was bad. God, so we're going with that last year? We're like going season in general. Whew. 
Yeah. I mean, so much expectations. I mean, the year before, I, yeah, Miles Jack wasn't down, was hard to deal with, but there were no expectations for that season in my mind. I mean, it was like all that was gravy. That was our moment, though. Like, we could It was our moment. I agree. <laughs> that was our window. But that was like all gravy. Like, uh. Last year, there were expectations, and they were all crushed in those two games. Yeah. So, thanks, Patrick, for bringing all that back up. <laughs> what, about the, what about every single Titans game the past three years? Oh, my oh, God. God. I haven't watched the last two, most of them. What was the, game, oh, what was the, what was the score of that, the, actually, six to nine of the home game this yeah, year? Yeah, the first game of the season, what the ma- first game what, against them. What made it worse was that it was like 170 yeah. freaking degrees in the stadium. Yeah. Do you, uh, you were at that game. I was. Sat next to you. Sat next to me at the game. I... I've never been so miserable in my life. It's pretty hot. With the heat. Pedialyte, like, thank God for We that. were drink. no lie, we were drinking Pedialyte. Gatorade mixers, it was awesome. And Gatorade. That's it. Yeah. No, not, not anything mixers, else. Those together. That's funny, because they don't sell Pedialyte in the stadium. No, we brought it in. <laughs> like, we was, and we knew it was going to be so hot. The Patriots game was another game that was just so hot. But Houston I, was hot too. I have to say, I'm going to recant everything, because Mike just nailed it. Every game against the titans yeah. ever i i didn't see much of it last year but i saw pit, like pieces of Derek uh henry going off and which is again the uh, only game he's ever had like that since high school yeah so and i've said over and over again i will never pick the jaguars to beat the titans until they do because they can't do it there's some bad ones there, there are kryptonite I, so yeah I, I hate talking about the titans there's some old, any titans game there's a lot old colts games where we blew the division yeah, but you, you, you couldn't get mad at that because the Colts were good at that point. Still, though. We were Titans aren't good. Like, Titans, are like, Titans, are, Titans are like slightly above average, <laughs> and they still beat us every time. Yeah, Titans games. Every Titan game. Well, speaking of the Titans, I guess this kind of is the segue. This is a question from Brad Harvin, and he says, and he's at the rundown underscore BH, and he says, any interest in Jonathan Cyprian returning? He says four straight years of at least 100 tackles. He says, if not, what free agent safety is affordable and enticing? I'll let Mike take this one because we're arguing over who is going to go with this, but go for it, man. No, no thank you. I don't, no. I don't know if he could pay us to play, <laughs> and I would take it now, never again. I mean, 100 tackles, like how many of those were him like chasing somebody down and yeah. tackling them, like 15 yards down the yeah. field. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, trying to cover the guy. I mean, yeah. sip, sip hits. Okay. Like, okay. Yeah. He has some like hits where you're like, oh, oh, man, he's nailing somebody, but dude, that guy in coverage is the worst no. ever. And that's, uh, that's our weak point. I bring is, back Barry church first. Yeah. I brought him back. <laughs> yeah. I would see if like, I, I don't know who, anybody. like, can, I play can, YouTube. Can, yeah. Find anybody to play uh, besides him. No way. You know, what makes me disgusted is that we took him to, Spots before Zach Ertz got drafted? Of course we did. So, yeah, it makes sense. Because tight ends are a crapshoot. Okay, so here are the safeties that are best available Eric Berry, Trey Boston, Morgan Burnett, Jonathan Cyprian. Burnett gets signed, I believe. Glover, Glover Quinn. I think Quinn retired. I don't think we're picking up a safety unless somebody gets hurt. Like a, like a cut. And Is Eric season? Berry the only shot at us signing somebody? Yeah, and he, that's probably too much money. And the take only, him in a heartbeat. But only reason they bring him in is because they want a veteran presence, like trying to. Can you like, see guide Eric Berry taking a one-year deal? Absolutely, if he doesn't get picked up by somebody else. I wanted them to take Eric Berry like two, three years ago when we had the option too. Do you when think he, when Eric he, Berry takes a one-year, ten million dollar deal? I can see it. Why not? The Tyran Matthew yeah. route. Yeah, is that absolutely. Our, is that our best bet? Yeah, I, I, if, I, I would give that, that to him in a second. Oh man, Dude, these young guys, these young guys need somebody like that for they another year. Harrison playing together, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, they need somebody like that, and it'd be well worth it to get these guys trained up and ready for three, four, five, ten years from now. Yeah, I mean, I just I'm really hesitant to pass the baton over to Jared Wilson. I mean, I I want to like him. Who wouldn't be? But he's never done anything that has made me think he can do it. The only saving grace is that our DBs are so good that they're going to cover for him. I mean. I mean, we've talked about this in the past. Imagine I mean, one of them getting hurt, though. If if either of our DBs go down, I mean, I mean, if you're if you're Tom Brady, if you're Andrew Luck, if you're one of these premier quarterbacks, and you're lining up under center, and you're looking at our defense, and you see Jalen Ramsey, you see AJ Boye, you see Ronnie Harrison in the box, and then you see Jared Wilson in the middle of the field, 
You think he's going to be playing the, him the, the single some. high safety? We play a cover one, cover three hybrid imagine. most of the time. I can't imagine them playing most that of the much t- with him. I think we do. That's oh, what God, we play. I hope not. That's what we have That's played. That's what we have oh, to play because Ramsey and Boye are just like man coverage beasts. And you see Jared Wilson in the middle of the field, and you're thinking, really? Jared Wilson, like, and I want him to be good, but like, that's where I'm going if I'm that if I'm the quarterback. For sure, and that's where we've gotten beaten for the past five years is up the seam. I mean, that's been our weak point for yeah. the longest time, and we get destroyed there. But with that being said, we do have a different defensive mind in house who has his specialty is yeah. packages, mixing up packages. If you can't think that that guy's going to come in and not try to cover for that and find a way to do it, then why is he here? I do hope they get more creative this year. Then they absolutely will. That's the only reason he's I there. So. I, and see, this is where I disagree with you guys. Because in 2017, the year we made our run, we were the most uncreative team of out course, there. Of course, but you had, when you, out, when you can out-talent you have somebody to be, like exactly. That, it's like the Seahawks. I mean, we, they just out-talented you. They, yeah, dude, we have like the most turnovers yeah. that a football team's ever I'm had their entire life no, on defense. But that's what when we. But we you can't rely on that. Look at the schedule of quarterbacks we played. It's there's a lot of factors that led into that. And we, and we also relied on that last year and it didn't work. Yeah, because yeah, our pass rush couldn't get there and because our linebackers not, couldn't cover. Because people figured that stuff out, man. Was it that or did yes. they just drop off and play? No, they didn't drop the off. were different. They ran more. They weren't in long passing situations like the years. They were prior. down more as well. Uh, Field position wasn't as good. I'm a fan of lining up and cover one. And like, I love it. Trust me, you know I love play. cover three and all that. But yeah. it's ideal, I, but it doesn't do it work all the time. Exactly. I love. I mean, I know it's he's the greatest coach of all time, but I love the Bill Belichick. Every week, you, it's different. You don't know what you're gonna get, but it's a lot easier said than done. Because he does it personnel wise. He does yeah, it yeah, what I mean, I've got, the what they've got, yeah, and he matches it. it up. I do think we have the players that could do like a three, four, four, three higher. We do I'd love to see that. Uh, no, I think there are. I think we're gonna see some different stuff this year. That'd be interesting because I don't, I mean, I don't watch a lot of other teams, but I don't ever remember seeing that like work. Like I don't ever remember seeing a team that flips between three, four and four, three. Does Baltimore Pittsburgh, did it for a while. Does Pittsburgh not? They used to, they've always been a pretty much, yeah. but nowadays oh, yeah. it really doesn't matter. You're a coach. Come on. It's, it's really. Yeah. I don't know. That. If you have the personnel for it, which we do, we have the speed, we have the I mean, players. Alignments and splits are different. I know. I, you, know, I know. Yeah. No, it's not really alignment and splits. It's that like. From week to week, you want them to be consistent. So it's like if it's more like if you have a guy that can play in a three four, he can play in a four three. Not so much I you think can we flip have those between. Players, though. No, I know, but like you commit to one or the other. Yeah. Like not so much you you flip back and forth is what I'm saying. Yeah. I think bottom line, if we don't have the injuries like we did last year, we're fine all across the board. If That's we true. do, if we do have significant injuries or key guys go down, they're gonna have to mix things up, which they haven't been able to do in the past. I have an idea. Let's just have a really hard training camp where your yeah, risk of injury goes Wear them the hell out. Just wear them out so that they get hurt. I agree. And they get just burnt out on football. They, they just mental, hate life. They have mental breakdowns. Like, they don't even know how to handle like idea. normal let's, everyday let's stuff anymore. That. All right, this is our last question. <laughs> and this is from Mike Wilbraham, and he's at Abe for Lincoln. And he says, which do you see more likely? A thousand yards receiving from D.D. Westbrook or a thousand yards rushing from Leonard Fournette? I'll take this question first because I'm the biggest D.D. Westbrook fan on the planet and I'm probably the biggest critic of Leonard Fournette. I think we see a thousand yards out of both of them next year. Oh, D.D. D.D. stepped up the second half of last season. Like if it wasn't for Bortles completely just falling off the deep end, he probably would have gotten to a thousand yards. He's a man. Like, dude, he's, he's gotten there. He probably would have been like a second or third round pick if it wasn't for the other issues. He's had a couple years in the league. With Foles, if DD doesn't go for a thousand and what, seven or eight touches, then something's seriously wrong. Ah. Fournette is a thousand yard rusher. He's a first round draft pick. He's an a elite running back. If his head is anywhere near, is where it's supposed to be, our line's healthy. There's no way he doesn't go for a thousand yards next year. So I think both. Man, I like that answer. I like that answer. But that wasn't the question. It was which was more likely. Did you? I think it's Leonard Fournette. Because I think our offensive line comes back this year strong. I think that Fournette's a really good runner. We just drafted probably the best run blocking lineman in the draft. And I think that just the there's there's no way he doesn't get it. I mean, unless yeah, he gets suspended or hurt. <laughs> How I many more targets is DD going to get this year to get to? Oh, I think yards? he's going to be the number. What one. What do you have last year? Ninety-six targets. He's going to. How many yards? 
Uh, 717. Which almost all of those yeah. were in the second half of the season because so he didn't get thrown to in the, the fr- middle. Yeah. And yeah. Drag route. Right now, dude, up the line routes. too, man. Like he yeah. busted him out the line too. I mean, dude, we've got a quarterback now though that likes to throw the ball. Doesn't like to hand off to a running back. He likes to throw out of the backfield, yeah. but we're not talking about out of the backfield yards. We're talking about rushing yards, right? Yeah. Yeah. Rushing so yards. you think that? Yeah, I do. Nick's going to come in and completely change his style no. altogether no, and Fournette, not throw the ball I anymore. Fournette's easily a thousand yard rusher if he's healthy. I think it is either way. My point That's being, but I think DD, I mean, I, I how, about, how about we rephrase the question? Who gets more yards next year, DD Westbrook or Fournette? I think it's Fournette. Running versus passing. Fournette, for sure. Yeah, I think it's Fournette because straight running? Because yeah. DD's got to split that with Lee. He's got to split Lee, who it might with not be healthy. Shark, Chris Shark who might not be able to catch a ball. Guys, Cole, but Cole, who Fournette's, couldn't catch a ball last year. Fournette's not splitting carries unless he has to. Dude, but you just named receivers that DD's the only one that is a legitimate. I think Marquise Lee might consistent. Be able to come back and give you something. He might be able to. I think he will. Might. What do you expect out I mean, of. That's also at the same time, DD's getting that more. That much more attention at the same time. Well, that's true too. What, do you, that's a good what point. are you expecting out of Marquise Lee this year? Like if, honestly, if I get f- like what six hundred yards and three touchdowns, I'm happy. I didn't expect much when he was healthy. So this season, that's the thing. I mean, no, but he had a good year before he got he hurt. did, he but it eight, took like six years eight, for him to get to that point because all the injury yards. No, I mean, not eight, even that, dude. Eight hundred, eight hundred and five. Like yeah, I mean. But a, a third down threat. I mean, he had a lot of receptions. He was he was the go to guy. Keelan Cole had a couple more yards, but uh, dude, Keelan Cole Lee had more receptions. I can't believe you've been throwing Keelan Cole in the conversation. Marquise Lee's most career yards is eight hundred and fifty one, twenty sixteen. And how many touchdowns? It was uh, three touchdowns. He wow, has eight touchdowns. Wow, in his career. Marquise Lee. Yeah, eight thirty one and three touchdowns. That's a yeah. third receiver on any other team in the NFL. Ugh. I mean. Are we going to talk about Bortles here or no? I mean, yeah, a lot of that is Bortles. I, I, I mean, mean, that's the thing. I mean, I, I don't know. Target, 63, I mean, 63 catches. A lot of that is on Bortles, but. Hey, what about his banner years, man? What, the most he's ever had in his years Should have kept Allen Robinson. Nah, shouldn't no. have. He didn't like Bortles. He hated it here. Yeah, well, yeah. Bortles is gone. Well, we didn't know that. Bortles looked like the real deal last year. Says, let's not talk about Bortles anymore. You brought it up. We all love Bortles, but he's gone. But you brought it up. We got, we got Minshew now. <laughs> well, so anything else you guys want to add? I mean, at this point, that's a lot for off season. I mean, yeah, that's sure. pretty exciting as far as everything goes. I mean, I think overall, I just want to say, I mean, as a Jaguar fan, I'm very optimistic. Yeah, I, I mean, too. I think they've done very well as as good as they could in free agency. You can't knock them for the decisions they made. They addressed what we needed. They did very well in the draft. I mean, it's just going to come down to. Injuries, honestly, at this point, I really think that's what it boils down to. I'm excited for Foles. I'm really excited. Yeah, I mean, you, I, I don't mean, think I don't better think he be can't be 88 million. He better be really good. Yeah, not, I mean, but I mean, for a, a starting quarterback, spiral. Honestly. Yeah. Hey, a pass that goes where it's supposed to. That's it's easy to uh, catch. It's been a while. It's been what? Five years since Brunell. Yeah. No, nah, Garai was pretty accurate. No, well, that one year. Yeah. I am. I mean, all the national pundits are like. Hyping us like this is the team to watch. Chris Sims loves us. Chris Sims. I mean, everyone loves. Everyone loves us. Dude, we we everyone we should be us. the comeback because our this defense year. is really good. Yeah. And we added Foles. I mean, we should. If we're not in the playoffs next year, I'm be upset. I mean, if if we don't I agree. The playoffs next year, I'm be. But I think upset. it's a wild card. It's not a winning division. Yeah, I'm okay with that because I think the AFC South will be pretty. I didn't good. I wasn't okay with it. I'm just saying I don't think no, we're winning the division. I think the AFC South will be pretty good. I agree. That's the thing yeah. so. Definitely one of the top three divisions, yeah, I think. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I think we get there. Uh, I'm excited to see what happens. But um, if you don't know, we're going to do the same thing we did last year where when the summer weeks come, we take a position and we just dissect each position for this podcast. Which is going to be so, awesome. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. I mean, it's, it's honestly my favorite time because I can flex on my like. And by awesome, I mean like <laughs> super boring for everybody else. No, no, no. I mean, if you're into like the X's and O's of football, then it's good football. I mean, it's good talk. It's good talk because um, we can really get into it with that position groups. I'll try to come up with some other stuff to talk about for. We'll try to throw Joey people. some soccer questions. And Something because like I'm like I have my jersey on tonight. I'm super disappointed <laughs> there was not a single men's national team question. I can't even talk about the like women's national team and the the dude that How plays for them. Not Does, like the U.S. Dying. make the World Cup next time. I don't know. This is all. I yeah, can. they will for sure. Yeah. Okay. Not that I'm against them, but it's I the mean, first time in like 20 years I had. So okay. it's the law of averages. All right. How, how about since we're on it, who wins the NBA finals? Any thoughts? Ooh. Golden State, obviously. Yeah. Who Should wins the to? Eastern Conference finals? Is that better? 
Who's winning the right game now, now? The Bucks and the Raptors are playing. I think the Bucks were winning by five Let's last time we checked. I think the Bucks take it. I think the Raptors came back. Let's see. I think I just heard a buzzer. What about the PGA? Let's go golf. PGA Championship. That's true. And if if you're new, if you're new, Jason knows nothing about golf. The last two winners of the major. You have. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if you're picking Tiger Woods for the PGA Tour Championship. Give me a second here, okay? As the golf expert on the podcast, because because I I called the Players (laughs) Championship correct, didn't I? You and did. I called the Masters Championship. It, actually, he did. I did. Which is absolutely so I'm, I'm insane. A, I'm going to call myself the golf expert. You, at this point, you can. And I, here's where I'm going to go. What's the, what, what tournament is it coming up? PGA Tour Championship. PGA Tour. Where's that at? It's in New York at uh, Black they play golf Hills. In New York? I think. Yeah, it's like the toughest course ever. Wow. It's got like grass that like, uh, grows up to your knees. Outside so here's, here's green, who's going to win. Yeah. Here's who's going to win. And I hate to pick this and people think I'm, like, I'm uneducated because I am. But I have this gut feeling. Give me Tiger Woods. He would be the first back-to-back major championship winner that had not played a tournament in between since 2006. Who was? Which was him. Tiger Woods. So, so, not a bad call, but, dude, his back is gimpy, man. It's like, it's getting there. But not a bad call. He's like, odds-wise in Vegas, I think he's number five. So And that's why he's going to win. There you go. Who is the uh, leader? Uh, DJ Johnson. Okay, I'm gonna go with Brooks Kapka. That's okay. who I picked as well. Okay. So you can't go wrong with Brooks Kapka. He picked him because he's a Florida State fanboy. I'm not a Florida State fanboy. He picked fan him boy. because he watches golf. I do. So, so I'm. You know what that I'm, means that was a rough one. Tiger Woods. Woods. Tiger Woods is winning. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what that means. So anyway, go Kapka. Yeah. Well, that's gonna be it for our podcast. I appreciate you guys listening. Um, remember, you can find us on Twitter at Another Jags Pod, Facebook, Instagram, Another Jags Podcast. We're on YouTube because people love YouTube. I mean, our downloads have skyrocketed since we've got on YouTube. Apparently, live. YouTube's like a big thing. Who would have thought? I know. I mean, I'd, so I know. make sure you check us on YouTube. You can rewatch our podcast. Uh, we're sitting here with our non Miles Jack candle. You can watch us uh, stare at that candle. But thank you so much for your questions, for your comments. Um, we look forward to talking about each position group as the summer goes on because we record every week. And, um, I don't want to break your flow, but if a listener knows where to purchase a Miles Jack candle, like other than knowing Miles Jack, I think it's like DM him. I think maybe. Yeah, I think so. Isn't that what it is? He's like, D- I think he meets you at the stadium. He like meets you at the that. stadium. Oh, well, I'll DM him. Yeah. I, I want to buy a Miles Jack candle because I think that's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah, and I want to tease- maybe Telvin should make candles. Ooh, that's too soon, bro. That dude's got to figure his life out. Sorry, he's made enough money in his lifetime. <laughs> I think he's doing all right. Money. So I'm gonna tease a little something. This is for our deep track listeners. Because if you're still here, look at the B-sides, you're a deep track listener. I want to tease you guys with something. We may or may not have been in context. Oh, you're going to throw this out there? Yeah. Oh, you're jinxing the yeah, heck super, out of it. Super yeah. jinx. Yeah. So we it's may definitely not happening now. or may not have been in context with some people that work for the Jags. And we may or may not have been granted special access to the team for training camp. All true. All I'm going to say Jason's is going stalker mode we appreciate Jags. you fans. If it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be able to do that. That's very true. But things are working. So thank you guys. We, we shout out to our Big Cat Country listeners that are listening to us through Big Cat Country. And um, as always, go Jags. Yeah, go Jags. Yeah.